Father of the Grooms, Prep for the Screenplay, William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm the author of 20 books. Uh, most of these are outdoor titles, but also some business titles, including one on how you can create your own job security. My newest book is a novel, Father of the Grooms, Murder, Marriage, and Mafia, An American Family Meets Their Sicilian Cousins. And this has been published as a first draft ebook on Amazon and you can get it for less than $5 today. I'm going to be starting on the screenplay of this book, which I'll be writing on in about the next four months. In the meantime, I'm gathering materials and planning how to write the screenplay. And if you're at all interested in making a movie and writing one, well, uh, you should look at this because I'm going to take you through it step by steps about the important differences between the two. I have a Kickstarter project to help fund this project that ends on May the 16th, 2020. Now you may contribute any amount if you wish, but if you contribute over $50, you will receive a very limited edition soft cover of this title. Now, this soft cover book is only going to be printed for as many subscribers as I have and only done this once. So I would fully expect that this book will actually appreciate in value. In the meantime, let's get started on showing you how to go about planning to write a screenplay. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. I'm the author of some 20 books over 800 YouTube videos, and now I have written my first novel and am in the beginning stages of writing a screenplay. My previous books have been business books, like Create Your Own Job Security, Plan to Start Your Own Business at Midlife, and Backyard Deer Hunting, mm -hmm. And extreme muzzleloading. Approximately five years ago, I began to have the concept for my novel, Father of the Grooms, Murder, Marriage, and Mafia. An American family meets their Sicilian cousins. And in the last nine months, I actually wrote it and published it. So uh, this book is available for $4.99 on Amazon.com at this very moment. The next step will be writing the screenplay. And in this video, I will describe gathering materials and information on basically how to write a screenplay. What materials you need and a little bit on how you go about it. So we're going to take you in survey form through two levels of college courses, the introductory course and the graduate course. So stay with me. Now, in the novel, we have 350 pages. Ooh, a lot of pages. And in the screenplay, we're going to condense it down to 110 pages or so. Look. And actually, the condensation will be even further than that, whereas on the novel, you have pages and pages of solid text. On the screenplay, you may just have eight or nine lines of text on the whole page. A lot of the pages will be white paper, and that's the way they're designed to look. I've already gone through some preliminary steps. I've gone through the novel, and I've extracted the scenes. And as it turns out, there are 240 scenes in my novel. 
Now if I use all 240 scenes, then my screenplay is likely to run over limit. More, maybe 200 pages. And that's absolutely unacceptable. So, during the screenplay process, you have to condense everything down to put not only your dialogue out of here, incorporate new materials in such a way that you condense the number of scenes and can get it in this smaller format. If you turn in, say, a screenplay that's 200 pages, it's not going to get looked at. It's not even going to get leafed through. It'll just get thrown in the trash bin. And I guarantee you the producer has a very large trash bin filled with other people's screenplay. Hmm. You don't want yours to wind up there. You want at least to make the cut that he's going to spend two hours reading it. You can go to college. You can go to UCLA. You can go to any number of state schools. And you can take a class in screenwriting or classes. Typically, there will be an introductory class on basically the basics of telling a story on film. And then there will be an advanced class where the students will actually write a movie script during that semester. Well, there is an alternative way to go. There is an outfit called the Great Courses, which selects some of the best college professors in the country. And they actually teach on video format, on CD, their entire semester's course, like this. Now, I have no financial arrangements with the Great Courses, but I use them quite commonly. And you can too. Not only do you get the video format, you also get a book. And I suggest that you first watch the videos and then thoroughly read the book. That way you get the full benefit of the course. Now in storytelling, this considers plot, and character, and tone. Well, I've already done my storytelling when I wrote the novel. That's one advantage a novelist has when he adapts his novel to a screenplay. He already knows it. He doesn't have to think of it whilst he's in the process of writing the play. He may restructure the scenes, put them in different places. He may even introduce new characters, new activities that he did not explore in the novel that are exciting enough to include in the screenplay. So new materials may be added. And hopefully, but not necessarily, the author will be involved. Sylvester Stallone, for example, started out as a porn actor in Hollywood. And he wrote the book Rocky, which was successful. He then wrote a screenplay. All right? He sold the screenplay, and then he played the starring role in the movie. Now, that's a very unusual situation. Usually, we writers, if we have any part in the movie at all, it's just as a script consultant or maybe a walk-on part, a few lines, and then we're gone. Now think of Alfred Hitchcock in this regard. Now, uh, concerning Sylvester Stallone, after he produced the Rocky movie, the initial one, then he also went on and produced movies in other themes. He did Rambo. All right? Then he did the Avengers series. Now, the Avengers series is some of the worst movies ever actually filmed. Uh, they use ridiculous things in plotting, like the hero gets himself in dire, desperate straits, and some other guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger in one movie, comes in and saves everybody, just out of nowhere. Woof! Now, that was horrible screenwriting in the 1920s, and age hasn't improved it a bit. So far as the writing concerned, it was a terrible movie. So how did it get produced? Well, Sylvester Stallone paid for it. That's how. Hmm. Now Lucas, when he does his Star Wars stuff, he can write his stuff out with a ballpoint pen on yellow legal pads and get away with it. 
all right? But most of us know we have a set format that we have to use. So it pays to study the genre first. You know, I've written novels, I've written plays, I've done radio scripts and so on and so on. This is just another different genre of writing that you have to learn how to do. So, we have our great courses, we've gone through that. And now, we take up the next step. And that is Lou Hunter's Screenwriting 434, the graduate level course. Now, Lou assembled this book after teaching screenwriting for over a period of a decade and more to thousands of students. And he has recently done a second edition, which this is. But he got the first one pretty well right the first time. So now you have learned how to do a story and plot and characters and this sort of stuff. And in this, you actually sit down and you and the professor together go through a screenplay, but you produce an original play. And it's graded as the end of the class. Now he has at UCLA perhaps 200 students per class, per year. So you can see how very large numbers of scripts get produced. Are any of these actually made into movies? Well, a very few are. But that's your competition. That's only one school. They are producing hundreds of scripts a year. At Ohio State, they're producing 100 scripts a year. At Valdosta, down here in Georgia, in my home state, they're producing 20 scripts a year. This volume of scripts necessitates that your script has to do several things. First, it has to be interesting. It has to tell a good story. It has to have well-developed characters who are somewhat complex. The story has to have some bumps in it. That is, it can't just be a straight line progression from one end of the story to the other. Some things have to happen. There has to be some vacillation, some changes of minds, some unexpected events, something to give meat to the story. It needs to be held in an interesting location. And it usually needs to have some sort of overarching theme. Now I accomplish all of this in my novel. A lot of it's in Sicily, very scenic place, lots of old ruins, modern stuff, really beautiful, magnificent buildings inside and out, so a lot of good cinemagraphic possibilities, and Sicily does not look unlike Southern California, including having exactly the same cactus. Hmm. So you can actually film some Sicilian scenes in California and get away with it. So that puts an interesting aspect on the production of the movie. Now, when you've gone through one guy's take after doing a decade of teaching and so on and so on and so on, you know, that's pretty good. But you want a second opinion. You want to get exposed to something else, somebody else's approach. And that's the 90-day screenplay here which takes you through the organization and the analysis of movies and exactly what made them work in different genres. What's the difference between a comedy and a horror movie and an adventure movie and so on. And invariably, you will be asked to see and view movies. Okay? Now, the oldest thing that we have preserved was by Aristotle, the ancient Greek. In his Poetics, he analyzed the plays of the day. And he said, okay, this is what makes these things work. They are in three acts, a start, a middle, and an end. Okay? They may be comedies or they may be tragedies. And so he described the plays he knew. 
Since then, we have evolved the genre somewhat. But his basic descriptions are still good, and this stuff is still taught today. And that's an amazing longevity for a piece of writing, over 3,000 years. And we're still reading his stuff. Now, we know this guy named Shakespeare. And he did a variety of stage plays, which were very excellent. This happens to be King Lear, others, of course, are Hamlet and Othello, which everyone knows by now. Now, Shakespeare performed his stuff on stage, and he oftentimes moved his characters to different locations. So his plays might consist of five acts, rather than three that Aristotle came up with. So it's not absolutely necessary that your play be restricted to only three acts. But, if you get outside of that genre and you get something so unusual, uh, better watch out because it might get tossed just out of hand. Because it's so different from what the producer, the guy who's going to raise money and actually make it, uh, is used to seeing. It's too far in, out in left field. However original it might be, that's the stuff of indie movies. Usually the writer has to finance those, get some friends together, film it, and make a pilot or something and put it on screen to film festivals and maybe it'll get picked up uh, by a major studio. Among the movies that's almost always mentioned in a screenwriting class is Casablanca. The movie has a lot to teach a student. It talks about plotting, it talks about character, it talks about scenes. All right, it talks about the general feel of the movie. What's the tone of the movie? What is a movie trying to say? Does it have an overarching theme? Yes, it does. How do the characters approach it? What's unusual about it? What made it work? Then, out of contrast, we have what might be called really a spectacular movie. And that the scenes are so fantastic and good, etc., 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 that the scenes can almost carry the movie by itself. That the action sequences are so great, and so on and so on, that the plot can be very, very thin. And the Rambo series is, typifies a lot of this. And in Star Wars, it certainly does again. Spectacular special effects, you get to see unusual places, unusual creatures, and George Lucas really had a field day uh, with that. And that's part of the appeal to the movie. But there is a theme that runs through this series of movies too. Usually, in a movie, uh, the young student is told that you should have a single character, a hero. And he goes through some sort of journey. He faces some difficulty. He overcomes some real problems. He meets a variety of interesting people along the way. And the movie is brought to a successful conclusion when he overcomes his obstacles or gets his goal or finds a treasure or something of that nature. Now, the 40-year-old virgin here, uh, he has a trek of his own sort, which is very interesting, very fun. This is a comedy, after all. And I used elements of this in my story when I got my grooms into some interesting and funny situations. Now, my movie involves a family. The whole family goes to Sicily. And they are confronted with a real problem. They have two sons, and the mafia side of the family in Sicily has decided that they are going to wed two women to these two guys, uh, or none of that family will leave the island alive. This is an earlier video where I discuss the characters and the plot of the novel in considerable detail. Hmm. These are attractive gals, and these are good-looking guys. There's no problem there. 
And physically, yeah, they're, they're sort of attracted to each other. But under the threat of death, they arrive on Monday and they're told that the weddings will be on Friday. Or the entire family will meet with an unfortunate accident whilst on their Sicilian vacation. Hmm. That gets sort of grim. So we break it up with some real comedy and we develop family dynamics. Now one of the fun things about North to Alaska, and I saw this movie, I spent years in Alaska, and I saw this movie before I ever went and enjoyed it then and enjoy it now, is that uh, this shows something of family dynamics. So the father, the mother, the two sons, their sister, their gay hairdresser uncle react with a number of characters in the plot of my book, including some exotic ones uh, like Father Flanagan, an Irish priest, and a pair of gay strippers. And they all interact in the course of this movie. So you can see, even just by me mentioning the characters, that, yeah, well, some interesting things are very apt to happen here. Now, we have two characters, the two grooms, that actually carry the movie. A low title, Father of the Grooms, uh, that title really didn't work in the end by the time I finished the book. So that's why it's subtitled Murder, Marriage, and Mafia, which will not be the title of the movie, either. We need a shorter title for the movie, and we will develop one, and I have, but I'll not disclose it at this stage. So, when Harry met Sally, we have two characters bouncing and playing off each other. They are diametrically opposite in many ways. Now, the same sort of thing was used in The Odd Couple. So it's not unusual to develop a movie theme where you have sort of two characters carrying the lead somehow. And so that's exactly what we've done. But the characters have to be distinctly different. They can't be the alike. They are brothers, but they're quite unlike each other. One is a Marine officer, a captain, who's seen combat and wounded. The other is a ne'er-do-well artist who got thrown out of his girlfriend's apartment in San Francisco because he could never raise the rent. Huh? Oh, he got sent home, back to Baton Rouge. What? Well, all right. Now, there is one other way to go. There are really multiple characters in things like The Longest Day. There's no single character that goes through it. There's no Ulysses here. But you see each person's story as it develops. One new movie that does this is 1918, which is very unusual indeed. To give a spoiler here, uh, the principal character who you think is going to, uh, the guy who you think is going to be the principal character tries to do a good deed and gets killed for his efforts. Hmm. Now, about my movie and how it's gone. Is there something out there that's sort of similar to the way I'm writing my movie? A couple of things. The James Bond series. In the James Bond movies, and in many others these days, your first scene has to really grab the attention of the reader, or the viewer, or the producer who's considering it for production. If he goes through three pages and it is dull as dishwater in straight exposition, describing the flowers of spring and the gushing waters and blah 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 and the blossoms and the butterflies, uh, it's going to go in the trash can. Get down to the work. Particularly if it's an action-adventure story. These days, the usual convention is you start off with some action sequence early in the movie. Bang! As soon as the screen opens, things are exploding, going on, or whatever, whatever, whatever. This is not the climax of the movie. You can't exceed the uh, stuff that you're going to do at the climax, but it's, uh, things get hot somehow. And so that's how you open the movie, and that's how I'll open this one in the first act. 
Then, the Godfather series. The Godfather series was a very popular series of movies when they were introduced. And well, rightly so. They were well done. They introduced the American viewing public to the Sicilian Mafia in a very real way. Showed some good real scenes actually filmed in Sicily. Now, I visited Sicily. And I, as a homage, will have some of my character's activities take place in exactly the same structures and buildings. So, uh, we'll get that done. This is a restaurant where Michael Colleon uh, meets his wife. And then we go up to the church where he was married. And this is a scene that you did not see in the movie. This is the interior of the church showing the new high altar, which I suspect was paid for with movie money. Getting down to the nitty gritty of actually writing things on paper. How do you do it? There is a given format that's generally accepted in the industry. And to help you get along with that, there are several books that go through the details of how you use this format in the most acceptable style. Yes, you can change things up a little bit. But again, you don't want to put things out there that are so strange. You don't want to send a, a movie producer a script on Purple Bond, for example, or anything like that. Now, you also have available to you screenwriting programs. Take care of the formatting and the margins and this sort of stuff and enable you to more rapidly work through the production of a screenplay. And the one I'm going to be using is Final Draft. It's not the only one. Now, Final Draft, uh, you purchase. It's about 200 bucks. There are some that are free. But you pay for what you get. Uh, and if you want to use the best possible one, yeah, Final Draft is come to be the acceptable standard. And it stood the test of time. So you get your program, you get it downloaded, and then you start thinking about, okay, how can I make my script different? while still keeping in the confines of the genre. Can't be overly long, nor overly short. Not if you want a full-length movie out of it. So, you have to have interesting plot. Something interesting has to happen. You have to have interesting and believable characters. Now, these can even be like in Tor Story. These can be artificial characters, but they have to be, to some degree, believable. It helps to put it in an interesting place. When your activities occur, they have to seem logical. They have to follow each other. You have to build towards a climax or climaxes through the course of the movie. Typically, you have little mini climaxes as you climb up toward the peak here, and then you go downhill the other side. So that takes care of that. It's also necessary to have an overarching theme for the whole thing. In my movie, the characters are all trying to improve their lives in some manner. And they are beset upon by obstacles not of their own making that they must overcome in a satisfactory way. And each of them are attempting to do this. And each of them, in the end, in their own way, succeed. So that's how you do a screenplay. We're going to get around to the physical writing of it in coming days. I already have the program in my computer. So we'll be working with it, getting used to it, and how to manipulate it, and then actually start seriously putting some words on this paper. I have an ongoing Kickstarter project that will end on the 19th of May 2020. And what this project is for is to raise money for me to take the next four months and write the screenplay. Uh, the trip to Sicily was not inexpensive. 
I've already eaten that cost. And uh, you can contribute. For those who can contribute $50 or more, you're going to get something really special. I'm going to have special editions of this novel printed and numbered and signed. And these are going to become collector's items. If the movie is as successful as I have every reason to believe that it will be, uh, this will increase considerably in value. So, you contribute $50 and you get this unusual, rare, and scarce book. I'm not going to print hundreds of copies of this. Only the subscribers will actually get the copies. So, uh, this is a way you can help finance my work and perhaps get something of appreciatory value. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. These are the reference materials that I mentioned in the video. And if you like, you can stop this anytime and take the information and order them from Amazon.com and uh, you can get them in just a few days. For those who offer pledges of $50 or more, I will send signed, numbered, limited, self-cover editions of the first draft of Father of the Grooms, Murder, Marriage, and Mafia, An American Family Meets Their Sicilian Cousins, to them. Now this will be a special printing of this title that will only be offered in conjunction with this appeal. I have contacted the printer, and even in the days of the coronavirus, he guarantees that the books will be available 60 days after the completion of the successful fundraising appeal. Now if this book and movie becomes as popular as I have every reason for it to believe it to be, uh, the book has the opportunity to considerably appreciate over time. Now some of my books have been offered on the retail market for $1,000 and more. Uh, there is no guarantee that this book will ever fetch those prices, but maybe it could. However, past performance is no guarantee of future value. For more information about my activities, you can go to www.hoviesmith.com. For more information on Father of the Grooms novel, screenplay, and movie, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Goodbye, and God bless. See you in the movies.